What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about curtains in Revit. Now a while back I did create a tutorial on curtains in Revit and it's quite a popular tutorial but there was a certain problem. Uh, now in the thumbnail, the thumbnail looked like this, so this is the curtain that I showed in the thumbnail and the curtain that I built within the model looked like this. Uh, so people weren't happy and I've got a lot of negative comments where the curtain that they have created doesn't look like the one in the thumbnail and that's fair criticism. Uh, yes, I do try to make maybe a bit more appealing thumbnails and grab your attention, uh, but uh, I, I guess I didn't show exactly how to create that type of a curtain, so I decided to create a new tutorial where I am going to be showing you how to create this more classical type of a curtain in Revit. It does take a tad more time, but the, the result is quite Quite, uh, quite amazing. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's tutorial. Now before I get into that, uh, if you're interested in some uh, longer form content, some courses in Revit where you can learn everything to go from the beginner level up to intermediate or from intermediate to advanced level, check out my website. Uh, first a link in the description there, I've got a lot of new courses. Also on my Patreon, that's going to be the second link in the, on, in the description, you have some of those courses as well as all of my Revit project files, so check that out as well. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get straight into the tutorial. Okay, so here we are in Revit and I'm just going to go, go ahead and start off a new project. Now for the template, I'm going to choose the architectural template, click OK, and here we go. So uh, just for this demonstration, I'm going to go to the wall command and let's pick out perhaps a thicker wall, something like the 300 millimeter generic type. And then I'm just going to place a small wall segment here in the middle of the screen, hit the escape key a couple of times, and now we're ready to get started. Now for our curtain, we need a window, or in this case, I'm just going to be placing a double uh, glass door. So let's just go here to doors. And unfortunately, we don't really have any loaded in, just the single flush uh, standard one. So let's go to load family. Uh, go straight to doors and then let's go to residential and the first one is the full glass uh, double door so let's open that up and I'm just going to pick the largest one click OK and now we can place it so I'm just going to place it like this uh, it opens to the outside and hit the escape key a couple of times and now we can get started on our curtain so I'm going to go here to the quick access toolbar and go into the 3d view and now let's start working. So the first thing that I'm going to be creating is going to be the uh, holder or the bar on top of the door that's going to be holding our uh, curtain in place. So to create that, uh, you can use either massing or in-place components. I find in-place components to be uh, a bit easier to, to work with. So I'm just going to go here to component, model in place, and for the category, uh, choose whatever suits you. I'm just going to go with the furniture and then click OK. And we can just call it uh, curtain holder. Okay, and let's get rid of Avast. Okay, so now uh, what I'm going to do is kind of uh, go off to this side and then go to set work plane. And for the work plane, I like to use something that's part of the uh, part of the the model. So I'm just going to go with pick a plane and then pick this inside. Uh, plane of the door. Now we can navigate to the east elevation, uh, which is going to give us the east view. And if I turn the visual style to wireframe, it's going to show me where the door is, so I can conveniently place that uh, curtain holder here on top. Let's go to extrusion, and for the plane, let's pick that one that we have already selected. There we go, click OK. And now I'm just going to create a simple circle here on top, uh, maybe something like that. Hit finish, maybe move it uh, a, a bit away. Yeah, kind of like that. Okay, so once we have this in place, uh, let's go back into our 3D view. And here, I'm just going to extend it like that, extend it to the other side, and there we go, it looks perfect. Okay, so the next thing we, we have to do is we have to secure it to the wall somehow. So let's go here to the uh, south elevation, and then let's go to create, extrusion, uh, pick a plane, click OK, and then let's pick this front plane. So when the whole wall highlights like this, click and there we go. Now I'm just going to create a simple rectangle kind of like that. Same thing on the other side. There we go. Hit finish, go into the 3D view. This is what we get. And then uh, I'm just going to make it a lot smaller, kind of like that. Okay, I think this gets the job done. 
maybe, just maybe move it up a bit. So I just clicked on the up arrow a couple of times and there we go. Hit finish and we're done. Okay, now we can get started on the actual curtain, the fun part. So for the curtain, I'm going to be using the massing inside the tab and I'm going to be creating this as an in-place mass just because the massing tools uh, do the best job in my opinion for this kind of work. Uh, but before that, we have to turn on the show mass over here and then go to in-place mass. Uh, for this, let's just call it the curtain. There we go. And now we can start working. Uh, now the first thing that we need to do is set some work planes. So for that, let's go to the south elevation. And then here I'm going to go to uh, reference plane. And I want to set one here above the door. Now I'm going to select it and move it down a little bit, kind of like that. There we go. Now I'm just going to select it, go to copy, and let's just copy it multiple times. And I'm just going to copy it down, uh, maybe one here one here in the middle, one here, and then we can add, uh, let's add a couple of more here at the bottom perhaps. Maybe move these up a little bit. This one can go down a little bit, there we go. Okay, now I, I tend to name these, so what I'm going to do is name the first one number one, the second one number two, and I, I guess you get the point. So we're just going to go all the way down, number five and then number six. There we go. So once we have all of these placed, now it's time to uh, create actual geometry. So for geometry, you can either use the spline through points or the uh, spline. Now I found that spline is a bit easier to work with. It uh, The spline through points, when you try to create the actual curtain, uh, it tends to give uh, out error messages and it doesn't want to create form. Uh, so that's the downside of the spline through points. So you have to kind of uh, play around and get it to work. And uh, that's the, the downside of the spline through points. But the upside of spline is it's easier to create the form. But the, the downside is it's a lot uh, harder to edit. So in this case, I'm just going to go the hard way, but uh, the way that's going to give us the best result, which, which, which is the spline. Uh, now here we have to choose the work plane. Now, of course, I'm just going to set this to work plane number one, click OK, and then Revit will offer us uh, which uh, view we want to work in because it's obviously not going to be possible in this view. So let's go to site plan and there we go. Uh, zoom in a little bit and now we can get started. So we want to go f either from the center to the outside or from the outside to the center. I, I just prefer to go from the center. So let's just go like this. Just creating that spline. Now, uh, you don't have to create too many points. This is the place where uh, your uh, curtain is going to be uh, like the most uh, most spread out. So let's go like that. There we go. Go to modify. Here we can maybe stretch it out a little bit in this area. I guess it's spread a bit too thin. Now, for this final uh, point, as you can see, if you move it around, it tends to mess things out, up. So what they tend to do is just you select the spline, you hover over this point, you hit the tab key once, and now you can move it individually. So I'm just going to place it like that. So let's go like this. Now, as I said, as you can see, uh, moving all of these points can be a bit obnoxious. It takes a while, uh, and that's the downside of this spline, but it is going to give us the best result. So let's go like that. There we go. I think this is good enough. Okay, so I'm just going to select this, go back into South Elevation, and then we can copy this. And let's just copy it from here down. But as you can see, it doesn't allow us to move it down. Now, the reason for that is because of the constraint. So if we unconstrain it, it is going to allow us to move it down. Hit the escape key a couple of times and there we go. Uh, now what I'm going to do is just go to the site plan, but now our splines are overlapping. So you just want to pick the first one, which is the top one, and then go here to hide temporary hide isolate and just hide element. Now for this, what you can do is perhaps go and just use the mirror with the draw access tool and just use the uh, copy option and check it off. And then you can just mirror it around itself. So it's just going to sp uh, spin it around. And basically you get uh, a different uh, different folds, which is going to look a bit better. So now if we go back to the south elevation, that's, uh, that's exactly what we want to have. Now, something that I tend to do just to help me out with kind of sketching everything out 
is I like to go and go here to set work plane, go to pick a plane, click OK, and pick the wall again. And then just uh, create one simple spline that's going to help me with the shape of this thing. So something that's going to go like that. So let's say this is something that we're trying to recreate. Perhaps move it in here a little bit more. There we go. So let's say this is the shape that we're aiming for. Okay, so once we have this in check, uh, the next thing that we can do is select this spline here. So just select the spline. Again, go to copy and then uh, unconstrain it and move it down here. So once it's down here, we have to shorten it a bit. So let's go back into our site plan. But again, they are overlapping. So you have to select this one, the top one. Again, go to hide element. And now we only have the lower one. So we can start playing around with this. So what I tend to do is just move these things a little bit so I can find out where the endpoints should be. So go now to south elevation. It's still uh, outside of this line, so let's go back into site. Maybe move this to the inside a bit more. Kind of like that. And again, tab key once, and then you can move it. Go back to south elevation. Okay, it looks better now. It's on the inside. And now I go back to the site plan, and I just spread it out a bit more evenly. So move this in a bit. Kind of like that. So it's a lot of back and forth and you're basically playing around here. You don't have to be too precise. There isn't really a right way to do something like this. It's just uh, the feel that you're trying to recreate. There we go. Maybe a little bit like that. Maybe move these a bit inside. There we go. Okay, so once we have this, let's go back to South Elevation and now we can copy this down. So copy, unconstrained and then copy it all the way down. So this is the kind of the thinnest point. Let's go back to site, uh, select it. So this is the top one again, go here, hide it. And now we can continue working on it. So in this case, we have to move it and compress it the most. Maybe like that. This is probably going to give us the best effect. There we go. Now, again, go to South Elevation, double check what that looks like. Okay, that's nowhere near enough. So let's go back to site. So we have to go even further. Compressing all of this. So it is uh, a bit of work. I, I do admit that. But at the end, you do get a curtain in Revit, which is uh, quite rare to see uh, uh, in Revit. Revit isn't really designed for doing things like this. It's kind of a hack, I guess you would call it. Let's go back to South Elevation. Okay, we're finally within boundaries. And now we can just move it down. So just go to, oops, uh, go to copy, select it. There we go, unconstrain it and let's move it down. So here I'm just going to extend it a little bit. So let's go back into our site plan. Uh, let's select it again. So hide the top one. And then here, uh, let's go here to tab. Just a little bit, not too much. And then here you can play around with it a bit more. I'm just going to make some minor changes, nothing crazy. There we go. Let's go now into South Elevation. Yeah, let's say that works. And I'm just going to copy it down once again. Again, constrain. And for this one, I'm not really going to change it. Okay, now we can get rid of this line because we don't really need it anymore. Go back into 3D. This is what we get. Now we just want to select all of these and go to create form and Revit will create our curtain. Now, one more thing that you might want to create at this point is some sort of a holder for this curtain. So you can do that by going to South Elevation. We can see this is our reference plane number four. So we can go into level one and then go to set work plane, go with number four, click OK. And then you can create a simple spline, uh, kind of like this, that just goes around this curtain. So maybe something that goes like that. Now make sure you don't attach it because it might give you some errors later on. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Go into 3D just to double check. Okay, it's a bit too 
uh, wide so let's move everything towards the inside a little bit there we go looks perfect and now we can just go to the south elevation and we can move this uh, so let's go to move unconstrain move it oops okay if it doesn't allow you to move then go to copy okay it's going to copy there we go um, maybe move it copy it down or is it going to let us no I guess that copy is the only way so let's go to copy unconstrain and move it just a bit further there we go go back into 3d select both of these oops yeah both of these by holding the control key and going with create form there we go okay now it's time to apply material so select both of these uh, forms so make sure that the whole thing highlights both for the curtain and for the holder uh, go to material and then we can go and search for some sort of a fabric material let's see fabric maybe canvas or um, let's see these are all carpet maybe beige linen would look cool Hit apply okay and one more thing we need some sort of a cutout here so what i'm going to do is just simply uh, go to set work plane pick this plane go in with a simple circle like that perhaps i think this will do the job let's go maybe to west elevation just to double check uh, and go into wireframe yeah i think this is a bit too large so let's oops let's try 13 there we go looks a bit better so just make sure that it's around this circle and then when we go back into 3D, we can select this and turn it into a void form. Uh, make sure it's a cylinder and just extend it all the way through. And then you can use the simple cut geometry tool to cut this with that. Oops. Okay, in some cases it's going to work, in some cases it's not going to work. So uh, you may want to play around with this circle and its uh, position. A little bit and then it might work so let's try again there we go now it works so there we go we have that cut uh, or opening in the curtain that's exactly what we want to have and now we can just hit finish mass there we go and we can select it go into a level one and just use the mirror tool with pick access option to mirror it around the center and there we go so now if we go into the 3d view this is what we get looks amazing and if i switch this to realistic uh, there we go we have quite a cool curtain here uh, modeled in revit and it looks fairly realistic for a revit model i must admit so there you go that's how you create curtains in revit if you want to download this uh, family check out my patreon first link in the description and if you're interested in some beginner or uh, intermediate or advanced courses check out my website the link is also going to be in the description thank you for watching uh, please subscribe like and share this video and i'll be back with another tutorial in a few days have a nice day